morning, Commissioner Eskridge. Good morning, Janelle. Thank you. We hear you well. And I see Paul Kent joined us as well. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Thank you. It's uh, bright and early here in sunny California. Or it's not quite sunny yet, but it will be. <laughs> well, you have nice weather, I'm guessing. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. I'll uh, call the meeting to order. It's eight o'clock. Uh, we have a quorum. And let's see, welcome to all of our guests. I think that's uh, Greg Fries. This I think the only name I noticed. There might be somebody else and welcome. Um, okay, uh, Janelle, would you like to go through the virtual meeting guidance, please? Certainly, thank you very much, Commissioner. Howell. Okay. Good morning, commissioners, members of the public and staff. To help us have a smooth meeting, I'm going to review just a few decorum rules for all. Number one, please ensure your mic is muted unless you are speaking. Number two, please state your name before speaking. Number three, in general, please have your cameras on if possible if you're speaking. You may turn your cameras off if you're experiencing technological challenges. And number four, as a reminder, the public chat has been disabled, but you can still mess send messages to the host if need be. And this meeting is being recorded and streamed live on YouTube. So with that, let's have a great meeting, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving week. Okay, thank you, Janelle. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to, okay. Um, okay, do we have any uh, announcements, Michael? Uh, President Hubble, I don't have any announcements. I'll, I'll save my announcements for my CED update. Okay. So that moves us to appearances by the public. <clears throat> Excuse me. Does anyone from the public have a comment or question or any statement they wish to make? Okay. Don't see anybody. So we'll move on to the consent calendar where we have five items. The cash statement operating, cash statement debt service, the review of minutes from 1110, uh, bids and award of contract for televising and cleaning, and then the employee handbook. Do we have any questions or comments on any of the items? Any questions or comments? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'm happy to make that motion. It's Commissioner Meyer. Motion by Commissioner Meyer. Do we have a second? I'll second it. This is Commissioner Bookland. Okay, motion by Commissioner, second by Commissioner Bookland. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? None. Motion carries. That takes us to the Chief Engineer and Director's Report. Michael? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, President Hubble. I have nine things to report, uh, but I'm I'm looking, and it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes unless there are, are questions, so we can get out of here early for our, our, our holiday our holiday week. Um, first, I, I want to uh, thank the commission for approving the employee handbook, and this is a big milestone, uh, and I'm really proud of the work that's been done by the Employee Leadership Council and, and our staff, Mike Lipsky, uh, leading this effort. Um, and um, I'm, I'm really excited to roll this out uh, January 1st uh, with those changes and with input from the commission on helping to enhance um, the, the process with the whistleblower process, which is in the handbook, which is a, a big new thing in, in the handbook. So thank you commissioners for, for introducing that concept and, and making sure we get that in this handbook. Um, the ELC will be um, next moving towards um, working on the employee engagement survey. We, I, I reported a couple of weeks ago that the RFP is out. Uh, we'll be hiring someone to help us with the employee engagement survey and the ELC will be diving in. And there will be a point where 
we also circle back with the commission on that survey before it goes out um, to look at um, the questions and to see if there are things that the commission wants to add to that survey. So um, Mike will be coming before you at some point after the first of the year with more ideas. Um, going through my um, going through my my report, um, some of you may have seen in the newspaper on Madison.com yesterday that um, a renter in one of our houses was charged with illegally um, selling migratory birds. And this is the house uh, across the street from the, the maintenance facility where we have our commission meetings. We have a property on the other side uh, of, of the road. Um, so somebody, uh, one of the residents has been charged um, and uh, we are, uh, we, the way we found out about it was through the newspaper article itself. Uh, no one reached, no investigators reached out to us, uh, to my knowledge. Um, so I'm going to be working with Paul Kent on what are our next steps um, in, in this, uh, with this property. And and because um, I, I, I don't know what our next steps are, but I'll keep the commission updated um, on that. Um, one thing, this, my second item is, um, I've asked uh, Paul Kent to come up with, uh, uh, to develop a memo on, on what quorum is for the commission and what voting looks like in terms of when it's needed for a super majority. And that has been, um, it's been a little confusing sometimes because we've been operating with eight commissioners for quite a period of time with, a, with a, that ninth seat vacant. And so it adds some confusion to what is quorum and what does a super majority look like. I, I reviewed the final memo from Paul uh, last week uh, on, on, uh, on his legal opinion on what, on what those um, elements look like. And um, I'll be bringing that forward um, to a future a commission meeting when we fill that ninth seat for some training on what a, what a quorum looks like and what a supermajority looks like. And I'll be sharing that memo uh, with, with the full commission. Um, last week also, um, the service charges work group, which has been um, a, 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 a number of owner communities who, who have um, volunteered to, to work with um, Bill Walker and Ben on evaluating what's working with our current service charges methodology and what are opportunities for improvement. That work was wrapped up last week uh, with, with the group um, outlining some key themes and um, we're still getting some input from a few other members, um, but we plan after the first of the year to share um, the input from the owner communities with you and then recommend um, some next steps based on, on what we heard and also getting more input from you on, um, based on that input and your use of the service charge methodology, what should we do? So that'll be coming to you. Um, in uh, after the first of the year. Um, the third thing um, that I've been working with the, um, the committee, the, the, the commission subcommittee and the CED review process on coming up with uh, a proposal for um, how the, the process can change in the future that takes, um, that's more condensed, takes less time, but is effective. And I've been working with Mike Lipsky and BJ Rogers, uh, one of our consultants on developing that proposal. That proposal is uh, complete. And Janelle is going to be working with members of the subcommittee and finding a time in January to meet where uh, I, can, I and Mike and BJ can, uh, can outline that proposal, get feedback before we come to the full commission uh, with um, a change process. So that is um, going on. Um, the next thing is budget. We've been monitoring our budget closely. I've reported to you that our O&M costs are, um, are, going, are up significantly and so are our labor costs. And uh, we're continuing to monitor that um, this month. And of course, next month, I think we're going to be okay end of year. Um, 
and uh, but I'll, it'll be it'll be close to to meeting our keeping our budget within our authorized expenditure limit. Um, so we're we're continuing to look at at that. And end of year, there's usually some savings and things um, that we have. Um, another announcement is we're having the with the artisan residence program. Um, we have our last uh, residency event coming up. It's on December 3rd at 5 p.m. in Shop 1. And uh, the theme is water protection um, now. And uh, RSVPs or reserves are encouraged. And it can be, uh, you can reserve through Facebook at One Water Madison. Um, or um, you can um, participate uh, live through a live stream on Instagram at One Water Madison. And this uh, last event is going to be a crash course for all experience levels on what water protection is and what getting involved looks like. So I'm really excited about this event um, and um, I encourage commissioners to plug in and, and be involved with that um, last artisan resident event of the year. Okay, Janelle, we can go to the next slide on the E-Team Retreat. Um, so this week, uh, we, the E-Team spent two days um, and we met locally uh, to, re, to re, you know, keep our costs low, um, to focus on how do we lead the implementation of our strategic plan and this will require all of us on the E-team to operate differently. Um, and we spend time identifying clear roles and responsibilities and developing a completely new process for how we're gonna manage priorities, set priorities. Um, so we, when we come to you or when I come to you, you know, it's through the budget process, things have been vetted well and they're realistic in terms of our workload and our ability to deliver. Um, this is going to be a process. Um, it was clear after our meeting when we left yesterday afternoon. This is going to take um, months to develop, formulate this new process because it's a change management process. And, uh, and we'll have to test, test our process as we go along. But it was a really positive meeting. And um, I'm really looking forward. You know, we, as a team, we're working forward on improving um, how we lead the district. Okay, Jenna, we can go to the next slide. So last week, also, I had a chance to um, go on a, um, a, a site uh, inspection for our pretreatment program. Um, and these are annual site inspections that Julie Moss, our pretreatment coordinator, um, goes on with all of our permitted um, um, users who have discharge uh, permits. And um, we went to Pfizer King Pharmaceuticals for a site um, tour. And these are really important for us because um, we have to make sure that uh, we protect our waste stream from slug discharges of, of chemicals or any types of contamination and even heat slugs or things that could add um, heat to the, to the wastewater. And so uh, Julie goes through a, a real process. I, I, you can go to the next slide. And we uh, go through a checklist and, uh, and Julie is really good at, um, at asking really good questions about where is your waste? How is it discharged? How are you handling uh, discharges and waste? Um, and in dealing with it. And she has a really good relationship uh, with, with the, uh, the, the, the industries. And uh, I will say that Pfizer is one of our, our, they're an A student. They are very proactive. They give us information early and they work really well with, with the district and with Julie uh, on this work. Um, and uh, you can go to the next slide. So when you get into um, the, the uh, surveys themselves, the, the, what, what Julie looks at is what, what uh, chemicals are being stored, how are they being stored, and what chemicals are there that, that are being stored. 
And uh, going through the tour, um, Julie's able to see um, what type of hazard materials are there. Um, you can go to the next slide, um, Janelle. made sure that the spill response kit was opened up to make sure everything was, was present um, and correct. And going to the next slide. And then when we got into the process areas, uh, we had to gown up um, so we minimize contamination. And this is where uh, the uh, Kevin uh, worked us through the process they use, uh, the, the process. And then uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, Janelle. And then um, um, more so of you know, what's happening with, with the process. And you'll see right in front of Julie's feet is a, is a drain. And Julie asked the question, so uh, where does this drain? And can you show me where it drains? Um, and that's really important that if you, ever, if you have a spill in a process area like this, that we have to know where that spill is captured and how it's managed. And uh, we we followed it all all the way to the, the collection area where where that uh, where a potential spill would be managed. Okay, go to the next slide. And then uh, I want to wrap up with um, the week before last. I was in uh, in Denmark for a week on a greenhouse gas reduction tour, and uh, over the course of about five days, I. Uh, visited and toured six facilities, uh, water, water and wastewater treatment facilities. Um, I, I was visiting these facilities with 11 other um, water and wastewater utilities from the United States, from New York, Seattle, Denver, Miami, um, Portland, and, and a variety of, of them. And, um, and we received uh, probably over 17 presentations uh, from, from, from the Danish, uh, the, the, the technical people working towards energy positive. And um, Denmark is aggressively uh, moving towards uh, the Paris Accord and the Kyoto Protocols um, and working towards uh, um, climate neutral. Um, in a period of time to meet those uh, the uh, the milestones in the in the Kyoto Protocol, um, I'm I'm still distilling all the all of my notes and hundreds of pictures, and I'm going to return to the commission um, with a more a, a fully um, a better presentation on what I've learned from the policy level, um, and share some good images of. What, what's happening in Denmark and what we can take away from that in terms of our learning as we develop our greenhouse gas um, uh, plan uh, this next year. I'm also um, going to be giving a more detailed technical presentation to our staff um, regarding um, how, how all of this is getting done. And um, you're gonna find that, I, at least I found that it's very surprising how Denmark is going to get to carbon neutral. It's very surprising and interesting. And I'll be sharing that with you. So that's the teaser I'm going to leave you with today. So uh, with that, I'll stop talking and I'll pause and turn it back over to you, President Howell. We'll see if you or members of the commission have any questions. Okay. Thank okay. you, Michael, for that informative. Look forward to seeing the uh, presentation when you're in Copenhagen. Uh, anybody have any questions? Okay, no, nope, nobody has any questions, thumbs up. So that will take us to the operations report. Alan, are you doing that today? Uh, yes, I will, Commissioner Hovell. Um, I want to bring up my screen here. I trust you can see that my screen just fine, commissioners. In the Good. All right. Uh, Alan Grooms, operations manager for the district. I'll be presenting the uh, October plant performance report. So there we go. Um, all right. So uh, numbers, uh, 
short summary, the numbers look uh, really good for the month. Um, our uh, effluent CBOD uh, is in our normal range. Ammonia is down. Uh, phosphorus is trending pretty much normal for this time of year. Uh, suspended solids was up a little bit. Uh, that's you know, attributable partially to doing things like uh, clarifier cleaning uh, after the UV season ends, uh, and that ended on uh, October 15th for this year. Uh, we actually ran the units uh, a couple extra days until that that following Monday to um, to try and uh, do a more orderly uh, shutdown of that and try and, uh, since it's a fairly new system, we're trying to refine and, and capture in good documentation form exactly the steps we're doing. So making sure that we had Rather than having that done over the weekend and then having somebody try and capture that, uh, trying to do a better job of capturing um, those details and those little tricks uh, that we're going to want to know down the road on uh, off-season shutdown and, and startup. So, but following the shutdowns of the final clear, the uh, disinfection system, uh, the latter part of October, we went into final clarifier cleaning uh, mode, uh, which is as you know we do it coming out of the off-season and then right before we start. And so that does elevate our solids a little bit with just, um, it's largely bits of algae and things like that that are power washed off the clarifier launders. So a uh, good time to look at those if you wanna see them clean. They're, they're really photogenic when you get uh, right past that cleaning, all that all that clean, uh, clean smooth concrete before that algae has a chance to grow back in. But that that is what drove our uh, suspended solids numbers up in the latter part of October. Uh, chloride numbers, uh, it's the same, same kind of story. We're kind of right in that uh, pretty been pretty dry on flows. So that's that's a concentration based issue. So we've been running fairly high on that for the last couple of years now, just due to the lower flows than what we usually have. And our fecal numbers on disinfection continue to track in a pretty good pretty good value. Um, that range of values that we see is tightened up with that newer system. It's it's a much more consistent system. Uh, if you might recall some of the older ones, it was kind of a broader wedge of the historical variance of, of where we hit. So it's kind of statistically, it's been tightening that range up. So any questions on the treatment performance metrics? Okay, move on. Uh, the first resource recovery slide uh, for clean water, this is water returned to the environment. Um, Again, we're, we'll uh, expect a number that's pretty close to what we had for 2021. You know, at this point, we're at the end of November. So um, the numbers shown on the screen here are through the end of October, but uh, we've continued to be fairly dry. Uh, we did see a somewhat of an uptick in flows at the beginning of November, uh, but I think we're going to be for the year pretty well on track with the kind of numbers we saw for 2021 for total total water return to the environment. So no surprises there. Our biogas numbers continue to trend towards um, what looks like it's going to be a, uh, uh, a high year uh, for us, uh, higher than uh, the 2020 and 2021. Looks like we're going to go uh, probably over the 300 million cubic foot mark is what I believe. And then the reused effluent is just that uh, it's a replace, it's effluent that's been disinfected and reused, uh, suitable for purpose. Um, that is... Uh, offset for what our city water purchase would be if we were uh if we didn't have that system it would be uh we'd be using uh, potable water for those sort of things so any questions on this slide ezra's got a question alan yeah yeah hey, alan one quick one just uh to refresh for me and probably everybody is biogas here refers to what we reuse and not what we flare or is this the totality of all kinds of biogas we generate that's a great question, Commissioner Meyer. This is actually a total total of everything. So, okay. um, and I, you probably driving by, you've probably seen, uh, um, if you've been by recently, we've had the uh, flare has been running uh, a fair amount of the time. Um, part of that is we're generating more gas, but we're also doing an upgrade project on the generator control panels. Uh, those are pretty old technology. And so uh, that was intended to be done earlier in the year, but that, um, you know, supply chains, it's kind of shrug. Everybody gives the same, we, we all, we are all used to it by now, but we're, we're getting that, uh, one of those generators has been upgraded. The other one is currently down to finish that upgrade. We're hoping to have those mm -hmm. done by the end of the year, but unfortunately what that means, a lot of that gas is, is going out by, um, by the flare. And I shouldn't say a lot, it's not the majority, but it's, it's a fairly regular fixture right now to see that flare running in some, 
some way, some, sure. you know, some level. So that's a good, good clarifying question, Commissioner Meyer. I wonder, is there, if it's easy, it would, would this diagram be able to show us the, you know, in two different colors, say, or whatever, um, the gas that gets reused in our, in our engines and other things, and then what gets flared, just so that we see that, that uh, broken down. Yeah, there's probably it, it could. Um, I, I know we, we've kind of we've kind of I'll just share a little in, you know, internally we've debated on, um, you know, what what kind of graphics quickly give a good picture versus, you know, how far down do we want to take it and how much detail. So that level of detail could be added. Uh, it would just be um, you would add more complexity and uh, to the diagram. So um, and that, you know, those things are doable. Um, the other thing I'd, I'd point out the. Um, the paper reports that come in, the, I mean, it's it's it looks like a, a wall of numbers if you're not really scrutinizing it. But in the packet, it does show that breakdown of how much is flared versus how much is generated. Um, right. That is helpful. Uh, you're right. I forgot that that detail is in there, but I know I've caught it before. That's helpful. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Alan. But I mean, if that's something I mean, you know. All of this, this meeting is for the commission. So if there's a consensus that, hey, we want to see that level of detail. Um, that could be communicated back and, and we'll figure out a way to deliver that. So any other questions on this slide? All right, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Uh, Biosolid storage, the end of October, uh, we had about 15% uh, of the tank uh, filled. So um, we did get some hauling out through about mid-November. Uh, I feel fairly safe in saying we're done for the year at this point. I don't know if I've heard that official word. I know those crews are always hoping to get one more good haul day, but it just uh, as cold as it's been. And I, I think that maybe is, I think maybe we're done. So, but we do have, it looks like uh, storage uh, into, into May, it looks like pretty, pretty uh, solidly. So, and that's really kind of all we can ask going into fall. So, um, struvite production continues to, uh, continues to trend pretty similar to what 2021 was. Um, you know, it's it's down a little bit from 20. You know, the numbers we had in 2020. Um, so that's uh, that's something we're looking at to see if we can uh, pull that uh, production up a little bit more in 2023. Uh, Metrigo cake, we're not planning to make any more of that through the year. That was kind of all done in the spring, um, and that's that's kind of that offset to, you know, Metrigo cake and Metrigo is is you know it's all our biosolids. So. If you break it down in mass, it really is just a matter of where we apportioned it. So we've got that portion of Metrigo cake. That's a class A that's that can go out to uh, farm fields uh, distribution on surface or or even other uses. Um, and then the Metrigo is the liquid product, the class class B liquid that's injected with the terrigators. Or I I guess I should call them oxbows because I guess that's a trade name to say terrigators. So, but the big the big machines that we have uh, that we're all familiar with. So, so that's uh, and those numbers are you know trending right about where we would expect given how much cake we've made this year. So, any questions on this slide? Okay, with that, that's uh, that's all I have for today. Okay, thank you, Alan. I, I just had one question. Um, with the when did the disinfection stop? Now was that mid just a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, we are permitted to we're permitted to disinfect through October fifteenth in twenty twenty two, and that started on uh, March fifteenth, twenty twenty two. Next year we go to the extended disinfection season, so that's going to end up. Uh, we'll start that on March 1st, and we'll conclude that season on December 1st. Okay, so it goes through all of November. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. I thought it was mid-November. Okay, so we start that next year, March 1st to December 1st. Yes, and that, and that uh, is anticipated to be in effect um, going forward. Yep. Um, I know that there are some caveats and some potential for some studies to modify that, but right now I think the assumption is that this is this is what we'll be doing Mm -hmm. until further modifications on the permit. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, my screen went down, you're off. Just a minute, everyone. Okay, so that takes us to Paul with regulatory and legal. He's up early out in California. It is, but uh, we're good to go. 
Uh, thank you. So uh, just like with Alan's report, this is kind of a summary of where we were in October. And as Michael mentioned, uh, we began kind of on the general matter to kind of uh, begin putting some stuff together on quorum rules and, um, you know, voting and supermajority issues, which are, of course, now also an issue in our Wisconsin legislature. So we will um, uh, have have. Uh, Michael will have that for you uh, in a subsequent meeting. Uh, on the regulatory side, there were uh, a number of issues that are continuing, both with Badger Mill Creek, uh, the Lagoon, and the EPA review, uh, keeping track of PFAS and some of the federal involvements right now uh, with respect to uh, having PFAS listed as a reportable quantity for for uh, CERCLA purposes. A um, little bit of work with uh, some INI and also uh, some pretreatment questions on hauled waste. So uh, a variety of things there, but probably the busiest area uh, last month had to do with contracts. And there was uh, some issues with respect to the drying bed lease, uh, procurement uh, contracts, uh, the data management contract, and then we're also working on doing uh, some uh, templates for uh, easements uh, for various projects. And that's proven to be a little bit more uh, complicated than we had first thought, but we're in the process of, of wrapping that, uh, that one up. So a variety of uh, things last month, um, but I think we're otherwise in good shape. So any questions from anybody? No question, no hands are up. So thank you, Paul. You bet. And that will take us to future meeting schedule. So um, is the next meeting virtual or going to be in person? I was looking at the schedule, I didn't see it. Commissioner Hubble. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Janelle. I was just going to say, Commissioner Hubble, the next meeting is in fact virtual. And then I also wanted to point out in 2023, we did mark four tentative uh, meetings to be in person at this time, which I know you and Michael will be discussing down the road. The first one's not till March, but uh, just in case that question comes back up. And as I said, I know you and Michael. Yeah, um, we'll be touching base on that. Okay, I just remember from the last meeting, you didn't know if the December meeting would be virtual or not. So, um, the December meeting, everyone will be virtual. So that'll be the last meeting of the year. We got a number of items on it. So, most of them will appear to be the consent calendar. So that shouldn't be too bad of a meeting. Okay, uh, should I gotta get back? Okay, so any future agenda topics? And any other business? To Wilson, I'd like to move to adjourn because I don't think there's going to be any other business. Nope. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Wilson to adjourn. Do we have a second? Clark, second. Motion by Commissioner Wilson, second by Commissioner Clark. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? None. Motion carries, everybody. Have a good Thanksgiving holiday. Happy Thanksgiving, all. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Take care. Take care. See you in December. <laughs>